Hey everybody, how y'all doing? I hope you're having a great day. I know it's been a few days since you've heard from me and I apologize for that, but I've been kind of keeping track of what's been going on. And unfortunately, most of it has been fairly negative. However, in the midst of all that, I do want to say that I am thankful. My mood today is thankful and for a series of reasons which I'll go over. First and foremost, in Texas, uh, May 1st, we opened up, started the whole slow reopening of the state which I'm thankful for. I've noticed that traffic is gotten back to normal, which means it's bad, which is actually good because that means there's more people on the road, more people getting their lives back to normal. I always, always enjoy that. That's fantastic. So I'm excited for that. Secondly, in Texas, speaking of Texas and in Dallas, which is the county next door to the county I live in, I'm in Tarrant County, thankfully, where we don't require people to wear a mask at most places of businesses that we go to here, that's a voluntary um, issue. There are certain shops, like there's certain shops in there, like Costco, I think here, requires that you wear a mask. But for the most part, most places don't. It's voluntary, which is great. Whereas in Dallas County, it's mandatory, which is, give me a break. I'm not even gonna go down the road about how dumb that is, but uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. In Dallas County, where a lot of the other dumb stuff happens, um, the salon owner, Shelly Luther, was let out of jail. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with the story, uh, a few days ago, a uh, salon owner who opened her doors after the first, because in Dallas County, they said, no, we're going to extend this thing until the 15th, even though the governor said we could open on the first. Uh, she said, no, nah, I got kids to feed the, the salon, the, the women who work in my salon, uh, uh, who do hair, uh, they have families to feed. I'm opening. And even though the courts were like, if you open, you need to cease and desist. She's like, yeah, no, fam, I'm not having it. Uh, you know, May 1st, that's long enough. We have people to feed. She was arrested and taken into court. And a Dallas judge who really believes in the power of the state over the individual put her in jail and was going to have her jail for seven days. Seven days for opening her business. Meanwhile, in that same county in Dallas, they are letting out criminals because of COVID-19 early from jail. Now, I don't know how you square that circle, but um, let me get this straight. You, your, your punishment for a woman that you're concerned about spreading COVID-19, even though she's gotten her staff wearing masks, they've got plexiglass set up from what I understand from the story. They're taking all the precautions just to open so they can do people's hair and people are going there voluntarily. They're not forcing people to go there and get their hair done. All these, these people showing up voluntarily. You're going to put her in, to punish her for a COVID risk, you're going to put her in jail while you let criminals out who are actually attacking people in some instances because you're worried about the COVID risk in jail. Really? Really, Dallas? <sighs> anyway, the good news is uh, she had the backing of the governor, of the attorney general, of the, uh, of the state senators, of, uh, of uh, rather of the senators, U.S. senators of the state of Texas, uh, where I preside. And she got let out after two days or after I think she spent a day in jail, which still was ridiculous on his face. But I'm thankful that she's out, thankful that she's back uh, to taking care of her her. Uh, employees and taking care of her, the people who come to her shop, her clients. And the, uh, one of the senators, uh, Texas Senator uh, Ted Cruz, went there specifically. I think he flew in from Houston just to get his hair done at her, <laughs> get his haircut at her shop, which is pretty cool. So thankfully, she's out of jail because some of these things that have been taking place during this whole COVID crisis have been ridiculous. There's a lot of people who really believe in the power of government over the, over you. And they are loving the idea of enforcing their desire to tell you to do how you live your life, exactly where to shop, exactly what you can do, exactly for how long. I'm glad this thing is coming to an end because it needs to. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. And then thirdly, I am thankful that although the video itself is despicable of the murder of, uh, of the murder of, and I'm just going to say murder or, or seeming murder, of, uh, of of a of a mod of a mod Aubrey, the young man who was jogging in in a uh, I guess suburban neighborhood or neighborhood in Georgia, and he was attacked by a father and son, who 
say that they mistook him or, or, or thought he was a burglar or someone who had been burgling homes in the er area, although there was no proof that he had burgled any homes. Uh, the one home, the father, even in the 911 call, uh, says that he was in was uh, it was an under construction, so it was completely open. He probably went in and take a look at it. I've done that. I've gone to places where I've seen really nice neighborhoods that I like. You know, I live in a nice neighborhood, but other neighborhoods I've been to that are nicer or, or I like just as much or more. And if they got a house under construction, the house is open. I'll go check it out. I'm like, man, let me see what this house is like because you never know. It could give you ideas on what you like in a future place uh, when you want to move or kind of ideas for what you like your house to look like. And so I'm real big on that. So I completely understand that. I've done that. It's, it's kind of called, it's called, we call it kind of dream building and going in there and checking stuff on. Say, man, this is really cool. Or I like this or I like that. Or I like what they're doing the construction. And he might have just been in the construction and jogging. Who knows? But he, I mean, he wasn't doing anything illegal necessarily. I mean, the, at most, maybe trespassing, but the house was under construction and it was completely open. So they, at any rate, they kind of, chase this guy down he's jogging minding his own business on the side of the road they come after him this the father son in a truck with rifles and pistols um he tries to jog around them because they're following him he tries to jog around them. they cut him off and then he gets in and then the father gets out with a rifle trying to stop him and he gets into a fight with the father and I understand he's probably thinking, oh, my gosh, I got to fight for my life. These guys are crazy. So then the son who's in the back of the pickup truck with another rifle shoots and kills him. And this happened back in February. But thankfully, the video came out because another person was with him who took the video. And thankfully, the video, the video came out. And as I understand it, the video was leaked. It was not released. It was leaked because initially the DA was nothing to see here. Because it, it turns out the father is former law enforcement. And I'm a big believer in back in the blue. But you got to back what's right. I don't like this whole, well, let's pat him on the back because he used to be one of us deal. I'm not into that. Especially when you do something wrong that you shouldn't be doing. I'm just not down with that. So luckily and thankful the video came out. The video shows that the video does not match the police report the police description what they described happened at the scene the father and the son the video doesn't necessarily match that and so now the father and the son have been arrested now mind you it's been 10 weeks since this happened but still thankful they've been arrested i'm hoping there's some justice for ahmad Aubrey. i'm really thankful this happened the thing i'm not thankful for is how the celebrity culture is real big on coming out and zen and i hate when this kind of thing happens because the first thing that happens, especially with amongst the, you know, the ultra woke and celebrity types is they kind of, you and the want to be down celebrity types. Uh, they come out, see, see white people that's, they always after us, blah, 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 blah. And even, I don't like, I want to like LeBron James. I just cannot stand him when it comes to him wearing his politics on his sleeve. He's, he's. Like now, you've heard of guilty white liberals. He is a guilty black liberal. He, got, he made it out, and for some reason, he still he feels he got to be down. So, for whatever reason, there's he, he gets involved in all these things of which he knows very little about. The worst type of person to be is someone who knows a little bit or not very much about, or seems to think they know a lot about a lot of stuff when the truth is. You don't know that much about a lot of stuff. That's the worst kind of person to be. And, and he comes out and says, they are literally being hunted down as we leave our homes. What happened to Ahmad Arbery was disgusting and terrible. And those guys need to go to jail and if possible, the death penalty. I'm all about all that. But really LeBron, you live in LA, you live in a gated community, you have people who protect you and your family with guns. None of the rest of us apparently are supposed to have them, but you have people who protect your family with guns and you really feel like every time you leave your house, you're being hunted down, really? I get emotion. That's why Twitter is not something people who have a certain level of celebrity should be going and speaking on the moment something happens and let the emotion take get the best of them. 
I don't, I don't care about all this hyperbole and all this other stuff. LeBron, you're a spokesperson. You should know better than that. I don't feel like I'm being hunted every time I leave my house. Like somebody just outside waiting, somebody white just waiting outside to kill me the moment I leave my house. I don't feel like that. But I do get the premise of the point you're making when it comes to how we have to teach our kids as, as black as black people. And I've had to tell my own sons this because they're they're big guys. They're they're big guys. They're six three, good looking guys, sharp, but big guys. And I've told them just when you're de when you're dealing with the police, and this, although it's a former law enforcement of a law enforcement officer, when you're dealing with police, be remain calm, because you're shooter brother size. And I got that phrase literally from Shannon Sharp, who I also disagree with when it comes to politics and almost everything. I mean, he's another person who swims in hyperbole and just kisses LeBron's ass every chance he gets. But that phrase is true. That's a true statement. So sometimes you can be, you can be, well, I guess the best way to put it is a, a stop clock is right twice a day. And it's a very apt phrase. That's something we have to teach our kids. Be careful when you're out in public, especially when you're dealing with the police or dealing with law enforcement. You're shooter brother size. So don't get belligerent. Don't start getting wild. Don't start yelling and screaming and all this sort of stuff. Because more than likely, there's going to be some video. And if the video shows that you didn't do anything wrong, then that's 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 a wrap. And all I can see from the video of Ahmaud Arbery is he was trying to defend himself. Because he saw some guys with guns following him in a truck thinking, oh man, I'm going to have to fight to save my life. That's what I got from it. And unfortunately, he got taken out. And I hope those guys, I don't care about them going to jail for life. I'm a big believer in the death penalty. You hunted the guy down. All you had, you didn't have to do that. Even if you thought he was, he was somebody who had previously burgled in a neighborhood, it is not your job as a citizen. Cause you're not, this guy's not a cop no more. It's not your job as a citizen to, to confront them with weapons. That's not even the law in Georgia when it comes to citizens arrest. That's not even the law. So I'm thankful that this video is out. I'm thankful it got released. I'm th or, or rather, I'm, th I'm thankful that it got, basically, like I said, it wasn't necessarily released. It was leaked. I'm thankful it got leaked. I'm thankful the truth is coming out. I'm thankful that I'm not seeing race riots, which is fantastic. I'm thankful that that's not taking place. And I'm hopeful that the truth comes out, the full truth. I'm also thankful that uh, Mike Flynn, uh, the, the Justice uh, AG Barr, is getting to the bottom of this whole fake Russia collusion thing, and we're finding out just how fake it really was. It was pretty fake. And <laughs> some people very high up in the levels of government, including the former president, who knew, or it seems as though they knew something was not quite right. And I'm looking forward to more information coming out about that too. So very thankful on the on the whole about all the stuff that's taking place. Thankful that we're getting ready to uh, open up again. I do believe we can turn this thing around. I believe we can turn it around if we do it right before the end of this year. But we got to trust that and our God, first and foremost, trust in God, trust in ourselves. Be cognizant. Don't be around people who have, who have uh, propensity to maybe get this disease and get sick. But don't be afraid to live. Go out and do the things you want to do with the people you want to do them with. We just got to do it smarter. But we can still do it. And with that, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. If you like what I said, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay, you too. Give me the thumbs down and, and place what you want to place in the comment section. I'm happy to hear from you, whether you agree, whether you disagree about those things I'm thankful about and in the things I'm not so thankful about. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, hit that notification bell so you get notifications when I'm going back on. I look forward to hearing from all of you. I'm thankful for the, for the uh, subscribers that I have. Love to see the channel grow, so please get the word out about it. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Hope you have a great day. Take care.